Every year, over 10 million children get head lice in the U.S. alone. Contrary to popular belief, lice actually prefer to live on clean heads. It can happen to any child, so having head lice is nothing to be embarrassed about. It takes only one infected head to cause an epidemic within a school or classroom, so educating the community is key in preventing outbreaks. Head lice are always present, but many outbreaks happen when children come back to school after summer and winter breaks. These are the key times to organize a school-wide head check. Our goal is to provide you with the information you need to organize a head lice check for your school, show you how to check for head lice, and provide some tips and hints as well. Along the way, we will get some expert advice and cover some of the common misconceptions associated with the many treatment options available. We ask a local school nurse how children get head lice. A common misconception about head lice is that they can fly or jump, and this is untrue. Head lice usually are contracted by a head-to-head -head contact. This could include uh, sharing pillows, combs, brushes, or even coats. The best thing to do is to check your family periodically and make sure that you're not finding anything, and also encourage your child to avoid sharing personal items. It's most prevalent during back-to-school time, September, um, or when kids come back from any holiday, that's when we see it a lot. What are head lice? Head lice are tiny, flat insects that live on the human scalp. They're about the size of a sesame seed. Head lice sustain themselves by sucking blood similar to the way mosquitoes do. Lice cannot fly or jump from one person to another and can only crawl. Children often get head lice from head-to-head -head contact with other children. They do not live on animals. Head lice can only survive on humans. Lice may be passed around on shared combs, brushes, hats, and other personal items that touch the head. Lice can live off the head for up to three days, but their eggs or nits need a warm environment to develop. What are eggs and nits? Eggs are laid by the female louse. They are about the size of a poppy seed and are difficult to see because their color easily blends in with the infested child's hair. Eggs are laid near the root of the hair and are attached with a waterproof, glue-like substance that can't be washed or blown away. Nits are the empty eggshells left behind when lice hatch from eggs. Dandruff is commonly mistaken for eggs or nits. Nits vary in color from yellowish brown to white. Eggs and nits are not easily removed and must be carefully combed out with a stainless steel lice comb. The Head Lice Life Cycle Lice live for approximately 45 days and go through three stages in their life cycle. Eggs. The female louse lays the eggs with a unique glue that cements it to the hair shaft near the root. The eggs develop and hatch approximately 10 days later. Nymphs. Once the louse hatches, it is called a nymph and is barely visible to the naked eye. The nymph cannot reproduce because it is not fully developed. After about 10 to 12 days, it becomes an adult. Adults. The adult louse can lay up to 4 to 10 eggs a day, starting another generation of lice. The adult stage lasts about 28 days. So what are the symptoms of lice? The most common symptom of lice infestation is itching. If you notice your child scratching his or her head often, especially behind the ears or at the nape of the neck, check for lice. Usually lice can be found in these areas. Also, do frequent checks when you know of a lice outbreak in your child's school. It is possible to have head lice without itching. How to check for head lice. Find a comfortable area for you and your child. Have your child seated so you can easily maneuver around him or her while checking for lice. Search the head under bright, natural light. Head lice may be hard to find because they move quickly and are very small. If it's not sunny out, use a reading lamp. Newly laid eggs are almost transparent. It is helpful to examine the head from different angles of light. This is easily done by moving around your child while searching. Part the hair and closely examine the scalp, especially the nape of the neck and behind the ears. When searching for lice eggs and nits, look for small white or yellowish brown specks that are about the size of a poppy seed. You may see lice quickly moving away from the sunlight. To tell the difference between eggs and dandruff, try to dislodge them from the hair shaft. If they are not easily removed, they are probably eggs.
When a head lice infestation is confirmed, a note should be given to children to alert their parents. Children who have had head lice are usually excused from the school until the infestation is gone. Make sure parents are aware of the school policy and when a child can be sent home from school and when the child can return. Head lice can spread rapidly through the school population and your school should have established a written policy to deal with these outbreaks. Many schools have adopted a no-knit policy and you'll want to identify whether your school has a no-knit policy. Under a no-knit policy, children may not return to school until the school confirms complete removal of all lice and knits. In this way, infested children will not transmit head lice to others and reinspection of returning children is easier because school officials don't have to distinguish between live and dead eggs. We went to our local pharmacy to ask about head lice and the various treatments available. In order to rid your child and house of lice, you have to remove both the adult lice and the eggs. There are many products on the market that can help you do that. There are prescription-based products that doctors can prescribe if the over-the-counter products fail, but those prescription-based products are very strong chemicals that can cause neurotoxicity if absorbed through the skin. So the other products, the over-the-counter products that are available are safe, effective, affordable, and can be obtained without a prescription at any retail pharmacy. Some of those are pyrethrin-based products that are based on chrysanthemum flowers, which sound pretty innocuous, but anyone who has um, allergies to ragweed and some other allergies can have topical reactions to those products. So the easiest product and one of the safest to use in very young infants on up to adults is a product called Lice Free. Lice Free is a very safe, effective, super saturated sodium chloride solution or salt solution gel that's made by Tech Labs in Albany, Oregon. If you use this product and also treat the bedding, wash bedding, to get rid of any lice that might be in the environment, it's pretty easy to take care of and you and your family will be happy and healthy again. We asked Dr. Mark Christensen, professor of pharmacy at Oregon State University and inventor of a leading head lice treatment, about dealing with head lice. Once you have a confirmed case of head lice, and you know it's a, in the scalp and hair, it's important to go out and choose a good product that can be used to treat the head lice. Uh, once the product has been selected, the hair must be thoroughly doused with the product, covering all the hair, all the scalp, once that's done, you must let this product stay in the hair long enough for the product to do its job and kill the lice. Once that's occurred, then we suggest using a metal comb to comb out the hair so that you then comb out the nits and the, the lice so that you can actually remove it from the scalp. Once that's done, then you're free to then be able to uh, wash the hair and get back kind of a normal life. Our product is non-toxic. The product's called Lice Free. This product actually uses three different approaches to getting rid of head lice. The first is using sodium chloride. It's been known for centuries that salt kills lice. The problem is, is keeping in contact long enough with the lice for it to work. Therefore, we developed a unique base, which is carbopol, in order to put the salt in so it can stay in contact with the lice long enough to kill them. Also, carbopol works as a good gel to immobilize the lice so that it can actually work like many of the other products where being immobilized you can take a comb and comb out the lice because they can't get away from anything. The last thing is we put essential oils into the product. These essential oils actually break down the defenses of the lice so that the salt can work better. Salt does not actually cause any problems to an individual. It's safe to be used unlike pesticides which can really cause a lot of problems. All the pesticides that are currently used are actually nerve agents and can cause severe problems plus severe uh, problems in terms of irritation of the scalp and head. Salt does not have those types of problems. It's perfectly safe to be used and is easy to handle. When salt comes in contact with the louse, it actually causes a desiccation where water is sucked out of the animal and actually desiccates it and dries it out so it can't live. Parents, siblings, nurses, teachers, and neighbors need education to identify the symptoms of infestation and the prevention habits that discourage lice from spreading. The more you know about head lice, the better prepared you'll be to completely eliminate lice from your school and home.